I would be talking about multicollinearity. Now, we would be saying what happens if there is multicollinearity and how to deal with the problem of multicollinearity. In particular, there are these following things that I want to do as part of this chapter. So first, what is the nature of multicollinearity? Second, is multicollinearity really a problem? What do I mean when I say is multicollinearity really a problem? Well, you know, I am interested in understanding, does it? So I understand that my, uh, you know, betas, my parameters, they are blue. Best linear unbiased estimator. I want to understand what happens when multicollinearity exists. Does that actually affect my betas? Does it reduces the problem of, um, I mean, increase the problem of this, of the betas? Are the betas no more unbiased? Are the betas no more efficient? So is it really a problem to deal with? Third, what are the theoretical consequences? of multicollinearity. Fourth, what are the practical consequences I'll differentiate between the two. I'll tell you what is theoretical consequence versus the practical consequence. So what are the practical consequences of multicollinearity? Fifth, in practice, how does one determine multicollinearity? Sixth, is it desirable? To eliminate multicollinearity. So what I have done is that I've gone ahead and listed the main things that we would be doing as part of this chapter. First of all, even before we go into understanding whether multicollinearity is really a problem or not, or how should one deal with multicollinearity? The important aspect here is to understand what is multicollinearity and to really differentiate between perfect and imperfect multicollinearity. So that's the first thing that I want to do as part of this chapter.